Welcome everyone to lecture number 42. This is the nucleus part nine, okay? In this lecture, we're gonna talk about nuclear balancing equations, okay? And essentially what we're doing is we're gonna do an application of two of our conservation laws and uh, we're gonna see if we, we know how to add and subtract. That's pretty much the whole lesson. So let's see what we're doing. All right, our conservation laws for the nucleus, remember we had conservation of electric charge, which means if you start with a total charge of plus 20, you must finish with a total charge of plus 20. If you start with a total charge of minus 3000, no matter what happens in a reaction, even including a nuclear explosion, you must finish with the same charge as you finish, as you begin with, okay? Uh, conservation of nucleon number, same idea. What you start with is equal to what you finish with. So remember, there's two types of nucleons, right? Protons and neutrons. So if we start with 30 nucleons, we must finish with 30 nucleons. If we have 20 protons and 10 neutrons, then we can finish with 25 protons and five neutrons, as long as there's 30 nucleons and as long as we don't violate the law of conservation of electric charge, okay? And again, in all reactions, all nuclear reactions, energy is conserved, even though in every nuclear reaction, the mass you finish with is, is less than the mass you start with. And the reason for that is that the mass was converted to energy according to Einstein's E equals mc squared. So mass is being converted to energy. So in every nuclear reaction, alpha decay, beta plus, beta minus, gamma, nuclear fission, nuclear fusion, the mass you start with is always greater than the mass you finish with, okay? Mass is being converted to energy, okay? According to E equals mc squared. All right, let's review our particles. We had a negative beta particle. Remember, it's just an electron. It has a charge of minus one. There are no nucleons. Positive beta has a charge of plus one no nucleons. Alpha particle, which is just a helium-4 nucleus, has two protons and four nucleons, which means two protons, two neutrons. So the charge of an alpha particle is plus two. Gamma, remember, was just an energetic photon. Gammas have no mass, no nucleon number, and no electric charge, okay? And finally, we have a neutron, which has zero charge, but one nucleon. Okay, we also mentioned the uh, isotopes of hydrogen. Remember, if you have one proton in your nucleus, you're defined to be hydrogen. Two protons are helium, three lithium, and so forth. It's the number of protons that defines the identity of an element. Okay, so these were the isotopes of hydrogen because they all have one proton. One proton, that's just a proton, a hydrogen nucleus. One proton two nucleons, a proton and a neutron called deuterium, one proton, two neutrons, this is tritium, okay? These are the isotopes of hydrogen. All right, let's go on. Let's talk about these nuclear balancing equations. Very, very simple. All you have to do is add things up. So I'll do a couple of examples, then we'll do some problems together, and then I made some problems up, some Mancini makeup problems, okay? Let's see what we're doing. Suppose I have a nitrogen uh, uh, nucleus, and you smash it with a night with a uh, neutron okay on the bottom is the electric charge the numbers on the bottom on the right hand side must equal the numbers on the bottom the electric charge on the left hand side the same for the nucleon number on top the number on top on the left must equal the number on top on the right okay so let's look at the electric charge we have a charge of seven zero so the total charge on the left-hand side, seven. What do we have here? We have the carbon six and one is seven. So that's good. Up here, 14 nucleons. One nucleon makes 15 nucleons. 14 plus one is 15. It's balanced. Gee, isn't that hard? All right, let's look at another one. Uranium-235, 92 protons define uranium. Smash a neutron into there. What happens? You get strontium xenon and three neutrons coming out. Do you know what this reaction is called? Does anybody know? Okay. This is an example of nuclear fission. A big nucleus, 92 protons, breaks up into 38 proton nucleus and a 54 proton nucleus. Nuclear fission. 
one neutron comes out, in this case, three neutrons, uh, 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 one neutron comes in, three neutrons come out, and that's what keeps the uh, chain reaction going. Okay, remember the exponential growth. Fantastic. So let's count the bottom. Let's count electric charge. 92 plus 0, 92. 38 plus 54, 92. 3 times 0 is still 0. So the 92 balances. Let's look at the uh, nucleon number. 235 plus 1 is 236. 90 plus 143 is what? 133. 3 times 1 is 3, so that's 133 plus 3 is 136. Uh, I'm sorry, 236, excuse me. 90 plus 143 is 233 plus 3. 3 times 1 is 3 is, is 236. 236 is the charge, is same as 236, the charge you began with. Okay, let's look at another reaction. Polonium, 214. Okay, it's decaying into lead. And what is this? This is an alpha particle, right? A helium-4 nucleus. 84 goes to 82 plus 2. That balances. 214 is 210 plus 4. It balances. Okay, so here's alpha decay. And it looks like here's another alpha decay reaction. Uh, uranium, 92, is undergoing an alpha decay. 92 is 90 plus 2 told you this is real tough. 238 is 234 plus 4. 4 plus 234, 238 is the total nucleon number conserved. Fantastic. So let's do some problems together, okay? Oxygen, 15, is going to nitrogen, which has 7 protons, and 15. So 15, 15, whatever this is, has to have a 0 up there, okay? 7 plus what is 8? Well, it looks like one. What is that particle? It's a positive beta decay. Okay? Positive beta. One plus seven is eight. Fifteen plus zero is fifteen. Very difficult. All right, so why don't you try to work these through, and then I'll go through them also. Seven, six, again, we have a plus one. 13, 13. Oh, look, we have another positive positron Decay. Remember, positive beta particles calls an, is called a positron, positive beta, or anti-electron. All right, let's look at a magnesium decay. What's magnesium doing? Well, it's changing to a negative beta or electron. So we have 12. What minus 1 is 12? Well, should be 13. And since I don't have a periodic table here and I didn't memorize, we're just going to put an X for the element, okay? It's not important right now. All right. Uh, 28. Zero plus what is 28? Well, 28. So this element would be whatever it is, okay? Let's look at uh, this one. 90, right? 90 protons. Uh, alpha decaying, 2 plus watt is 90. Again, I'll put an X here. So 2 plus watt is 90, should be 88. Okay, 242. 4 plus watt is 242. 4 plus what number is 242? Looks like 238. See? Addition, really difficult. Don't get these wrong on an exam. All right, let's look at polonium 204. Again, negative beta decay. Oh, yeah, it's adding a, a beta particle. Sorry, it's not a decay. So you're shooting essentially an electron into this nucleus. So let's look at the total charge on the left-hand side. 84 minus 1, I'll put an X here, is 83. 84 minus 1 is 83. 204 plus 0 is 204. Right? Don't you want a whole exam based on this? Not so hard. Let's look at iron being hit with this. Remember what this is? Well, this hydrogen, it's got one proton. It's got two nucleons. So this is deuterium. So if we smash a deuterium into a, an iron 54, 56 nucleus, let's count. 2 plus 56 is 58. 4 plus what is 58? It should be 50, 54. 
Okay. 26 plus 1 is 27. 2 plus 1 is 27. Looks like 25. Hopefully I can do my math. And again, I'll just put an X here because I don't know what element that is. Okay? Not so bad. All right, now these are makeup problems. Okay? I, I make these up. They don't really exist, but I just do it to balance. So let's take a look. I have X doesn't mean this exists, right? X80174 plus four alpha particles gives me six negative beta particles plus some element Y. Again, I don't have a periodic table and I'm making this stuff up. So let's count again. Let's count the electric charge, the number on the bottom, and see that they balance on each side. What do we have? We have 80. Four times two is what? Four times two is eight plus 80 is 88, right? So we need 88 on the bottom. And here we have what number minus six? You see six times minus one is negative six. So what number minus six is equal to 88, right? Well, 88 plus six is 94. So this should be 94. 94 minus six should be 88 okay let's look at the nucleon number right 174 plus now look four times four is 16 16 plus 70, 174 is what 184 190 okay so the top needs to be 190 six times zero is zero so here we have 190 fantastic Really not that hard, is it? All right, let's do another Mancini silly problem. All right, element Z, whatever it is. All right, we're going to add eight positrons, eight plus ones here. And we're going to get two alphas and element X. All right, so again, let's count the electric charge on the bottom, shall we? 28, eight times one is eight. Okay, I'm going to write this in red. So on the bottom, the total charge is 28 plus 8 is what? 36. So I need a 36 on the bottom. Here we have 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus what number is 36? I think it's 32. Okay, so that's the electric charge. We have 36 on both sides. Let's look at the nucleon number. 59 plus 8 times 0 is 0, so we need 59. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus what number is 59? I guess it's 51. Okay? Not so bad. All right, let's finish this off. Uh, one more problem. Element Y, I don't know, you're adding, you're going to smash in 5 positrons with that. We're going to get 8 alphas, alpha particles, or helium-4 nuclei, and this element. So we have all the numbers on the right side, so we got to work backwards, okay? So let's work backwards. 8 times 2 is 16, okay? We're doing the charge. 16 plus 66, okay? So what is that? 76, 82. So we need 82 for the total charge. What do we have here? On the left-hand side, 5 times 1 is 5. 5 plus what number is 82? Should be 77. 77 plus 5 is 82. 16 plus 66. All right, let's look at nucleon number. 120 plus 8 times 4 is 32. So we have 32 plus 120, and so the top should be 152. Is that right? 152? So 5 times 0 on the left-hand side, beta particle has no nucleons. 5 times 0 is 0. So this number should be 32 plus 120. We said it was 152. Okay. So this is the idea behind these nuclear balancing. Remember, inherent or not written on every, in every one of these reactions is on the right-hand side, 
even my imaginary ones, there's always plus energy. Right? There's always a plus energy, plus energy. Okay? Why plus energy? All of these should have plus energy. Why? Again, the mass you start with in all nuclear reactions is always greater than the mass you finish with. Okay? Why? Because mass is being converted to energy. And that's the E equals MC squared. Remember, C is 3 times 10 to the 8th. So when you square that, 10 to the 8th squared is 10 to the 16th. It's a humongous number. Okay, so in all nuclear reactions, the energy coming out is very, very large. It's many, 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 many times greater than what happens in a chemical reaction. Remember, chemical reactions, uh, uh, ordinary explosions, dynamite, and so forth, uh, involve electrons, as we'll see in uh, coming lectures when we start talking about chemistry. Okay, so I think that covers pretty much everything that I want to say about nuclear, and hopefully these problems will be very straightforward for you, not so hard. Keep in mind these conservation laws, okay? And remember, there's not a conservation of mass, but there is a conservation of energy. The energy you start with is equal to the energy you finish with, all right? And uh, so in all these reactions, mass may, is being lost, but energy is being created, and mass and energy are equivalent. Okay, hope you understood everything. Have a great day. Be safe, and see you next time. Ciao.